This is Twit. Now let's kick it over to Jeff and learn about the newest new thing in the insane GPU race that's going on right now. Yeah, so we're going from handhelds to liftable gaming machines with proper form and, you know, don't use your back, <laughs> use your legs, be careful, get a good grip. <laughs> but for those that don't keep up with graphics hardware, NVIDIA announced the launch of their RTX 5090 graphics card. It was announced at CES and the embargo officially lifted a couple days ago. Right now, social media sites are flooded with gaming performance reviews comparing the 5090 mostly to the previous generation 4090 because it's kind of the direct comparison. NVIDIA themselves even said that the 5090 card is geared more towards the prosumer or people doing computational workloads. And that's the reason they gave it 32 gigabytes of RAM and AI workloads I throw in under computational. For gamers, they're saying it will be the 5080, which is the dedicated gaming card. But for gaming, the 5090 is still going to be faster. It's just more expensive. It's the top of the line flagship product and flagships are not value purchases. Now, <clears throat> you know, we're, we're bringing this up because there's a Linux spin on this and Michael Larable over at Phronix has a 5090 that was sent to him and he did some testing. Now this is gonna be a little different because there actually isn't a released video driver. So there's an actually an early release video driver, meaning beta, it's 5070.86.10 driver to be exact. The driver does work with the 5090 where earlier drivers don't. The beta driver has the latest CUDA 12.8 package. And NVIDIA says you shouldn't use that driver for graphics and gaming workloads. They recommend waiting until the official driver is released at the end of the month. So today's benchmarking is all going to be CUDA and computational performance without any graphics or gaming performance. The benchmarks of the older cards were rerun with the latest 565.77 driver and the 5090 used the beta driver. Michael includes cards from the 2000, 3000 and 4000 series and from the low end of each of that series, each of those series is to the high end. The operating system he used was Ubuntu 24.10 with the 6.11 kernel. And keep in mind, these results are with a beta driver, but because it's CUDA, which has got a small revision, it should be pretty comparable to the release driver since it's a stable part of the driver stack. You know, CUDA has been around for many, many years. I'm sure Michael will check it out just to verify if there are any changes from the beta driver to the release driver, but we're not really expecting any, anything to shift. Now, if we take a look at the results of the over 60 benchmarks, which were ran, not only did they consist of CUDA, but also OptiX, OpenCL, and Vulkan compute benchmarks with the geometric mean of all those showing that the 5090 is around 30% faster than the 4090, which when looking at the Windows gaming benchmarks, it's about the same percentage. I can't say anything about Windows compute benchmarks because I've not found any compute benchmarks run by the normal tech sites, you know, Gamers Nexus, Hardware Unboxed, you know, uh, Level One Techs, you know, all, all the all the big ones. Mm -hmm. uh, now, Level One Techs talked about compute performance, but they're going to do it on Linux and they're waiting for the official driver. So nothing was done there. So I only personally know of Michael's compute benchmarks. There could be others, but I haven't seen them. Now, 30% sounds like a decent, decent improvement, but the downside is the 5090 costs about 20% more or more for this generation of card. It's, it's $2,000 for the Founders Edition and will be more for the Partners cards. Now, the Partner cards, those will be the Asus, MSI, Gigabyte, th those uh, cards. So based on their custom coolers and all that, they are going to cost more, but I don't I have not seen any pricing yet. They should be out. The pricing list should be out soon, and then we'll be able to see how bad it's going to be. The other downside is power, and Michael recorded a peak of five, 584 watts. Now, when you look at the performance per watt, it's the high end of the charts for being inefficient. 
it's not the worst, but it's it's in the running for the worst. Uh, one bright side is while it takes all that power, the actual core temperature was in the middle of the pack. So the new cooling system that you can see described in a Gamer Nexus video, they go into great detail on it. It actually does a pretty good job of eliminating that much heat. Now, I'm going to give my personal opinion based on all the reviews I've seen on Michael's and all the other stuff is because overall, Michael doesn't say that much whether he re recommends the card or not. He just presents the facts and lets the readers decide for, you know, he, he, he's pretty neutral when he released all the, the data. You know, personally, I'm going to follow along with Hardware Unboxed, where they said if the 5090 was released as the 4090 Ti, nobody would bat an eye. Because of the performance uplift, because of the price, it kind of is what you would expect from a 4090 Ti. But because it's a new generation, people expected more, and the reviewers in general gave a pretty lackluster view of the card. Sure, it's faster, but it's taking a lot more power and money. And so the overall cumulative end result is meh. You know, take a look at the article in the show notes so you can see all the different benchmarks and you can decide for yourself whether this is an upgrade you want to pursue or you might let this generation pass you by. Though I say that with keeping in mind that most people will not get a 5090 and it will be more interested in the mid range and lower range cards. Over the next few months, we should see the benchmarks on those as well. And when they come out, I'll be sure to let everyone know what the results are and keep everybody up to date. Yeah, so I, uh, it is good enough that NVIDIA has yet another money printer, right? It, for, for, for where the market is, heater? for the gr for the group of people that need, like actually legit need this sort of hardware, uh, it's going to be an instant buy. It, this is yet another money printer for NVIDIA. Uh, and, probably and maybe even a good space heater. Well, I, and, uh, and a space, space heater. heater, sure. And I'm, well, I'm not thinking, and Jeff, when I say that, I'm not thinking about gamers. I'm thinking right. about people that want compute, and particularly those that are working on like AI and LLM stuff. They're going to go, yeah. oh, it's 30% faster. Take my money. Here, I, I need as many of those as you can give me. Well, and and that, like I said, that's why it comes with 32 gigs of RAM in it, mm -hmm. GDDR. I forget. I think it's, I don't remember if it's six or seven. Yeah, what do we have to do these days? <laughs> yeah, it's it, it's a lot faster than uh, the 4090 memory uh, mm -hmm. pathways wise. But yeah, it's it's going to be for those people because the when you start looking at the professional cards, oh my gosh, the price on those. Wicked, uh, two, two grand and you can do your work versus getting some of the high end cards. Oh, that's... Uh, Okay, I'll buy twelve and still save yes. money. You know, yes. it's yep. and the power they take. You're not running off of regular, like the U.S. 120 volt. You're you're into the 240s, or you're switching over to like three phase mm -hmm. uh, power distribution units or PDUs to be able to power these uh, racks that they put them in. Yeah, you're you're hooking it up to a dedicated three phase power supply. Coming off of a two with two forty volts in, or yeah. Some, somebody will, somebody will inevitably there will be it's like server cases full full forty eight forty eight U server cases that are just servers with these things racked in them, and you know somebody's going to build a server farm out of those, and it'll it'll you know it'll power the next th the next big thing in AI probably, and yeah, this is yeah. this is yet another money printer for Nvidia. No no question. Yeah, and and depending on how many you stick in that server rack that you could be running say 480 volts three phase 50 amp maybe you have multiple of those circuits mm -hmm. so it and then cooling is a whole nother you know how do you keep all that cool and whatnot mm -hmm. uh, just kind of note here is some of the i think the performance uplift too being a little lackluster was also people have kind of been blaming it on that the 4090 was built on TS TSMC's 8 nanometer node, and so is the 5090. So uh -huh. it's the same process node as the previous generation. Now, it's actually, there are some... That, that's like, that actually makes the uplift fairly impressive, then, if there's no bump from the uh, the node. Well, they yeah, but they added a whole bunch more cores, and uh, the memory true. bandwidth went way up. And so, I mean... It, it you know the process node helps, but it's not the only thing. I mean, you're right. You got a lot of design 
that you can do to make things a lot faster while staying on the node, but it kind of helps to mm -hmm. jump both of them up to. Yep. And, and we'll see how it's going to work with an uh, AMD because the, the rumors on the street are that these cards are going to be very limited for several months. Mm -hmm. And right now, AMD is talking about they're going to release their cards about March because they're waiting until it's ready. They decided they're not going to launch at the same time as Nvidia because then it, they have egg on their face because maybe the drivers aren't quite ready or they've got some hiccups. And there's talk of they're also building up inventory. So if mm -hmm. they if, if the Nvidia cards are all in the hands of scalpers and things are ridiculously expensive, AMD comes out with some good cards and plenty of supply they could really make an impact on the market and get their market share back up, at least yeah. partially. Yeah, sure. Hey, it's Leo Laporte. I hope you've enjoyed this little clip from our programming at twit.tv. For more, visit our website, twit.tv, or subscribe in your favorite podcast client. There's also a link somewhere down there.